welcome once more to our service this morning. It's Sunday morning, it's Kilmarnock. We are sharing in worship with our friends from Kilmarnock South and with friends from right round the world. So wherever you are, we welcome you this morning and we hope that through our worship today, you'll feel a real sense of connection and belonging to the family of the church. Hello and welcome to this, our online worship again from Kilmarnock. My name's Taylor Brown, I'm the Minister of Kilmarnock South and I'm sharing in the service this week again with my friend Jim McNaughton from St Andrews and St Marnock's Church. We share together and with others as well, wherever you are, wherever you are watching this, be it at home, be it out a walk, be it in the park, be it on a Tuesday, enjoy, share together with us, sing the praise and let us know if you enjoyed it. to say thank you to all the boys and girls of the Sunday school and to your teachers who have sent me photos of you colouring in and also some of the things that you've been doing during lockdown. I know boys and girls that you're missing your friends and I know you're missing the Sunday school church and we are all missing you too. So this morning we've got a special slot in our service so that we can see what you've been up to and also to say hello. Have a look out for your photo and if you haven't already sent it to us then it's not too late, please still send it in. Here's the Sunday School in Lockdown. <laughs> Thank you. 
let us all pray together. Lord, when life is difficult, I believe in me, because I believe in you, and you believe in me. Lord, when I'm faced with a challenge, I believe in me, because I believe in you, and you believe in me. Lord, when I struggle to do the right thing, I believe in me, because I believe in you, and you believe in me. Lord, when I feel down, I believe in me, because I believe in you, and you believe in me. Amen. from the Old Testament comes from the book of Exodus and we'll read from Exodus chapter 19. The people of Israel left Rephidim and on the first day of the third month after they had left Egypt they came to the desert of Sinai. There they set up camp at the foot of Mount Sinai and Moses went up the mountain to meet with God. The Lord called to him from the mountain and told him to say to the Israelites, Jacob's descendants, You saw what I, the Lord, did to the Egyptians, and how I carried you as an eagle carries her young on her wings and brought you here to me. Now, if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own people. The whole earth is mine but you will be my chosen people, a people dedicated to me alone, and you will serve me as priests. So Moses went down and called the leaders of the people together and told them everything the Lord had commanded him. Then all the people answered together, we will do everything that the Lord has said. And Moses reported this to the Lord. So be it. Thank you. 
we turn now to Paul's letter to the Romans. Romans chapter 5 and reading from verse 1. Listen for the word of God. Right with God. Now that we have been put right with God through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has brought us by faith into this experience of God's grace in which we now live. And so we boast of the hope we have of sharing God's glory. We also boast of our troubles because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance brings God's approval and his approval creates hope. This hope does not disappoint us for God has poured out his love into our hearts by means of the Holy Spirit who is God's gift to us. For when we were still helpless, Christ died for the wicked at the time that God chose. It is a difficult thing for someone to die for a righteous person. It may even be that someone might dare to die for a good person. But God has shown us how much he loves us. It was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so Gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 10, and we begin at verse 2. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, James and his brother John, the sons of Zebedee, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Patriot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. These twelve men were sent out by Jesus with the following instructions. Do not go into any Gentile territory or any Samaritan town. Instead, you are to go to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. Go and preach, the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, 
bring the dead back to life. Heal those who suffer from dreaded skin diseases and drive out demons. You have received without paying, so give without being paid. Do not carry any gold, silver or copper money in your pockets. Do not carry a beggar's bag for the journey or an extra shirt or shoes or a stick. A worker should be given what he needs. Amen. And thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. And now a poem by Carolyn Gillette. And it's called Jesus You Once Called Disciples. And Elaine is going to help me with this this morning. Jesus, you once called disciples, choosing twelve to follow you. Simon, also known as Peter, Andrew, and Bartholomew. Philip, Thomas, James and Matthew, Simon, Thaddeus, John and James. Then there was the one called Judas. These were your disciples' names. Women, too, were your disciples, sitting, learning at your feet. Mary knew your word was precious even more than food to eat. Martha trusted in your power when her brother Lazarus died. Women shared your journey, Lord, and stayed when you were crucified. Lord, so many heard and followed like the woman at the well, meeting you the living water, she sought others she could tell. Like the boy with loaves and fishes, like Zacchaeus in the tree, many gladly heard your message, many shared your ministry. Jesus, still you call your people. Come and follow me today. Some, like Paul, feel sudden wonder. Some are brought up in your way. Lord, no matter how we meet you, by your Spirit make us new. May we know your living presence. May we daily follow you. Good morning. And now we're going to pray together. Let's pray. We come before you, gracious God, just as we are. We come with our weaknesses and our vulnerabilities. We come with our fears and our apprehensions. We come with faith and with doubt. We come to offer and to receive. We come to you, the King of Love, in the name of your Son and in the power of your Spirit. Jesus, when we receive you and believe in your name, you give us power to become children of God. When we are lonely, help us to remember we are children of God. When we are scared, help us to remember we are children of God. When we are hurting, help us to remember we are children of God. When we are sad, help us to remember we are children of God. Fill us with the power of your love now and always. And now we say together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen as you walk about the town you see a lot of doors and there's so many of them closed at the present time doors that were once flung wide in that welcoming way. Whether it be houses or shops, factories, restaurants, cinemas, pubs, 
hotels, even churches. All around we find doors that are usually open, closed. The names above many of these doors are household names, familiar to us, one and all, and yet now so remote. And if, like me, you will have your favourites, be it shops or restaurants or hotels, well, only you'll know your favourites. And the name above or on that door will be fond, fond and familiar. The name of Jesus is a very familiar name and he was known to many in his time. Twelve in particular, he called twelve disciples to him. And in Matthew's Gospel, they are named, each and every one of them. Each one names that for some have been become so familiar in our faith and in our daily life. For others, well now just distant memories. Yet they were called. They were called not to be static, not to remain behind closed doors, not to remain in the same place, but to go and knock on other doors. To go be mobile with tasks in hand and jobs to do. And go to places and doors unknown, most likely. I'm sure it was a tall order for such a bunch. Yet history relates that they did. They travelled to other places, must have knocked on different doors and changed people's lives. No questions, no fuss, no dilly-dallying for those disciples. Take Peter, Andrew, James and John. They changed their nets for faith and fished for hearts and souls. Matthew, well, he didn't collect any more taxes. He collected lives changed by faith. And others, well, they joined in too. And all the while, some doors were opened for them. Others closed. The church is in this uncanny position of trying to be open while closed. It's a difficult task. Recently churches throughout the land, indeed lately throughout the world, have had to change and adapt to keep the good news spreading. Jim and myself have had that steep learning curve on video and on social media platforms with Comarnock South and St Andrews and St Marnock's. And yes, we recognise and realise that not everyone can access this, this blended type of worship and praise. Blended. Yet so many can, and many beyond the doors of the church itself. For some it may be, and you may be watching today, a simple first opportunity to hear a little of God and of Jesus to hear some praise and share in some prayers. For us, it really has been a reminder, if remembering we needed, that Jesus just didn't simply ask those early disciples to gather together and stick together. He sent them out. He sent them out to the unknown. And he sent them with simply one thing. No spare shoes or two shirts. Not the trappings of comfort. Simply faith. We as a church are similarly taking that step outside, as it were, in faith. Through online adventures. For this is what we are given by God. A faith that will motivate us to go into new areas, to be challenged in doing new things and propel God's people 
to new and very diverse ways of sharing faith and proclaiming that same faith that Jesus died for us and rose again. Of course, many will be looking forward to that time when all those doors are open, myself included, to sharing together in church buildings once more throughout the world. Yet, in this time of challenge, in this time of great challenge, we have been offered a new way and we are led by Jesus. For amid all the crisis, God seems to be doing new things. Don't worry about your bag. Don't take two shirts. You don't need a stick. Just focus on what truly matters. Jesus and his love. Touching and travelling always with each heart. Amen.
acceptable in your sight, oh. 